Hello, I'm Rob Fay with Digimark, and I'm here today with my colleague Sprague Ackley. He's the principal R&D engineer at Digimark, and Sprague was recently named Professional of the Year by AIM North America, uh, the premier trade group representing automatic identification and mobility technologies in North America. So Sprague, congratulations on the award. Thank and you. And to point out that this is for uh, lifetime achievement. So perhaps you can give us a sense of um, what you've been focused on during your career and kind of how it's led up to this moment. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to throw it all in, uh, in, a, in a couple of sentences. Yeah. But uh, I, I started uh, a long time ago at a, at a little barcode company when not many people knew what barcode was. And I focused in on uh, the printing and reading technology itself. I got really interested in the, in the aspects of decoding and some of the difficulties involved with printing barcodes. And that led to some work and some research and trying to quantify how well a barcode is printed. And that led me into the standards world where uh, myself and a, a group of incredibly uh, talented colleagues uh, developed the first barcode print quality standard, mm. which was a impor very important uh, for the industry because now people could, uh, you know, get just the kind of barcodes they needed. They didn't have to spend a lot of money if they didn't need super high quality, yet uh, everyone wants barcodes to read. Uh, reliably. And so that work uh, was very important for the industry and really fun. Uh, and it and it was uh, important for my career because that got me into the standards world. And shortly after that, uh, ISO started a barcode committee and I was honored to be asked to uh, to chair that committee. And that's called ISO uh, and we are subcommittee 31, SC31, and I am uh, the chair of workgroup one, which is the barcode uh, subgroup or, or workgroup. Mm -hmm. And um, so in that group, we did a lot of work with barcode print quality, standardizing the, the method that we had developed earlier. For 1D barcodes, we developed a quality uh, system for 2D barcodes. And as well, uh, standardized all the major barcode symbologies, uh, which uh, we're familiar with today, like EA and UPC in the supermarket, and uh, QR codes, which seem to be uh, more and more everywhere these days. Mm. Uh, during that time, um, I, at back in the office, I was also very interested in developing new technologies and spent a lot of effort uh, developing the what became uh, known uh, as a as an imager, which uh, today they are so ubiquitous, they're just becoming regular old barcode scanners. Uh, and what that is is it's essentially a camera uh, that you uh, have algorithms that decode the barcodes in an image, and that's the become pretty much the standard barcode scanner. But it was uh, really exciting and fun to uh, to first develop that technology and grow with it as uh, processing power and uh, and video and uh, and digital cameras all developed uh, rapidly and we were able to use that uh, that technology to scan barcodes uh, then in the uh, in the standards world uh, we, there was a big need for developing a uh, print quality method for direct part marking. And that was a, uh, a, a huge effort also that uh, uh, allowed uh, essentially the uh, adoption of barcodes that can be permanently marked on objects. So, uh, so then uh, moving to Digimark was mm -hmm. uh, extremely exciting for me. Digimark barcode is just an amazing technology. And I'm able to leverage my scanning background in the imaging world, my quality uh, background in making marks that uh, can be dependably readable, and uh, and jumping in with the, the Digimark team, who are just phenomenally smart and uh, dedicated, and it's been a really fun ride here so far. Nice. Yes. Well, so from from that background. 
um, to now, you know, from your vantage point in the industry, um, what trends are you seeing in the automatic ID industry? What's what's hot right now? What what should people know about? Uh, that's a good question. Well, uh, certainly there is uh, the the complete uh, human adoption of barcode as part of our daily lives. I mean, when I started, hardly any, hardly anyone even knew what a barcode was, and who would have thought back then that we'd all be carrying a barcode scanner in our pocket. So the idea that everybody can use barcodes in their day-to-day -day life, I think is a really important uh, transition. One, it makes life easier for all of us. I just, uh, uh, you know, was at a uh, outdoor restaurant uh, a few days ago uh, and there was no menu. They just give you a QR code and you scan it and get your menu on your phone. Not only does that save paper, uh, you know, and reduce waste, uh, but obviously, you know, it is uh, these days a healthier way to do it. Uh, and so I think that's important because now in the business side, there's just no resistance to using the barcode technology. Uh, we take it for granted that boxes arrive at our door covered with barcodes. Um, we completely take it for granted that uh, um, in the supermarket, there's just nothing that doesn't have a barcode on it, and that allows quick uh, picking for those of us that, you know, grab our groceries, uh, you know, by driving up and having someone load them in the back. But also in the store, you know, it's enabled self-checkout and people are very comfortable with the technology. And to me, that's super important uh, in coming to Digimark because the whole idea of Digimark is to put the barcode on basically all surfaces. And people have no problem with that because they're just completely used to aiming a phone at something and having it scan. And, uh, and so to me, that's a really, really exciting thing about uh, the Digimark technology is it takes that little barcode and puts it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, you know, I understand that, you know, 10 years ago, uh, you predicted serialization uh, was going to be huge. And so that is certainly proved out, proved true. Um, you know, looking into the future a bit, any predictions for what we might expect to see two, three, five years down the road uh, with auto ID in, in, in the industry? Sure. Uh, well, you know, serialization 10 years ago was something that, uh, you know, people knew they could do. They knew it might be helpful uh, and led by the, uh, the U.S. Uh, DOD and NATO. Uh, they did a huge serialization effort, uh, high value items and mis mission critical items. And that was really the first kind of huge test of the system. And it, it has been phenomenally successful. Everything from knowing where the parts are uh, during the assembly, tracking things out into the uh, various um, military theaters as necessary, and also making sure that uh, parts that were not supposed to be there, fraudulent parts, are kept out of the supply chain. Yeah. Now that was kind of an expensive big thing to do uh, because the, the methods and the software were not really available and they had to develop all that stuff themselves. These days, there are many companies that offer uh, serialization uh, packages and uh, the idea now that you can print at high speed with something like an inkjet technology, uh, individual items can be serialized at speed. Um, for instance, uh, one thing that we're very much involved with at Digimark is fresh food uh, labeling, where um, sure you can print a, a big uh, you know, uh, data bar, which is the GS1 symbol for um, for variable uh, information and in for use in the uh, in the supermarket, uh, but that takes up a lot of space. Mm. And the idea that we can print a Digimark barcode all over the label that's barely perceivable by humans to being outright invisible, yet it scans at the point of sale uh, with uh, 
in the face of damage and folding and moisture, uh, much more robot, robust than the uh, than the regular barcodes. Um, you know, and it's uh, one thing that's particularly exciting is it's um, it's what we call a sparse mark, in that very little uh, of the actual area is is marked. And so what a what a Digimark barcode on a fresh item looks like is a bunch of little tiny dots all spread out. So the amount of ink that's used is much less. So it's just a very exciting uh, way to enable serialization that coupled with all of the software that's now available from, uh, mm -hmm. from many vendors to handle that huge amount of data in a, uh, you know, in a useful way so that we can manage our processes more efficiently. It's to me, uh, serialization will expand, I, I believe, greatly. But the biggest thing that uh, we will be able to leverage is serialization and not just serialization, but also general uh, what I call secondary data or what GS1 calls attribute data will become much more the norm. And so right now at the point of sale, we just scan it. It beeps. We get the price, you know, we, we go on our way, but in the future, we hope to see a lot more actionable, uh, in real time use of this data. So for instance, if there's something nearing a, uh, you know, a best buy date, uh, expiry, maybe, you know, you get at the point of sale, it comes up and you get, you know, 10% off because you're within two days of the expiry date or, uh, you know, if there is a recall on something that just occurred and someone goes to buy it at the point of sale, the checker can say, I'm sorry, this item is has been recalled. We will, you know, take it off your bill and replace it with one that we know is OK. That actionable at the point of sale type uh, world I see is going to be happening in the next five years, uh, not just at the point of sale, but broadly throughout uh, our world and uh, i think the consumer is going to really benefit from that yeah agree and you heard it here first <laughs> <laughs> um so you know the the really cool part a lot of cool stuff happening at, at digimark you're part of teams that are looking at um you know kind of the cutting edge research and development here at digimark so maybe you can give us a bit of a, a hint, uh, you know, a peek behind the curtains. What are some of the things uh, at a high level that you're excited about uh, you're seeing at Digimark? Sure. Um, boy, that's like that's like walking into a candy store and saying, what's your favorite candy in here? Um, oh, boy. Well, uh, let me touch on maybe three, three quickie, uh, three quickie ones. So the Digimark barcode that uh, you know, for those out there who are aware of Digimark and, and, and are aware that for the past five years, uh, Digimark barcode has been being, uh, has been added to product packaging, which is completely amazing. Uh, you know, those of you out there that, uh, have, uh, access to the Walmart toy catalog, for instance, you know, you probably have no idea that that every page is completely covered with Digimark barcode. So that that's what what we call the Chrome symbol that's blended in. Uh, you know, that's incredibly amazing. But then there's a version of that that is instead of having blobs of color that are spread around so you can't see it, uh, we take into wherever there was a little blob, we take a dot and we and when you look at that kind of Digimark we call it binary symbol um, it kind of looks like you know when you're staring up at the sky at night uh, you know you see a bunch of stars out there and uh, it's it or or another analogy I use if if you have a white background and you sprinkle pepper on it you see a bunch of little black dots uh, again very difficult to see mm. but because it's such a sparse mark um, one of the uh, big applications I see I'm very excited about is marking corrugated, which is used throughout the supply chain. Regular barcodes on corrugated, uh, you know, work fine, but they use about 50% uh, ink, you know, a barcode's about half black and half white. Yep. Uh, whereas the Digimark barcode, it's more like about 5%. So that represents a 
phenomenal cost savings. Plus, because the Digimark barcode is spread out, uh, any little piece of it uh, is scannable. Whereas if you take a few bars off the, the barcode, it doesn't work anymore. But yeah. you can take like 80% or, you know, or scribble all over it. it. It's almost impossible to disable a Digimark barcode. So uh, that's one I'm very excited about. And that binary mark, amazingly, can be woven directly into fabric. Uh, people don't, you know, probably don't realize it, but looms these days, like just about everything else, are digital. And so you can literally weave in a Digimark barcode to fabric. And when you look at the fabric, you can have like a pattern woven in that's actually a barcode or this binary symbol. Uh, you know, it look it basically looks like a a nice uh, you know textured mm. fabric, but right. it scans. And the idea that you can have secondary data in addition to just uh, identity of the item uh, woven into that fabric, uh, it to me is extremely exciting. Yeah, uh, it can be used, of course, to identify things. It can be used uh, for for lot and batch tracing and all that kind of stuff. But the, uh, you know, the ability to uh, reduce fraud and uh, is 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 huge. I mean, how is somebody going <laughs> to going to fake an item that has a, a Digimark barcode woven into it? Mm. Uh, you know, it's it's just it's just uh, just amazing. And, and the other thing you can do with it, you can mold a Digimark barcode into something. And this is already being uh, tested uh, right now in Europe uh, with the, you know, if, if anyone is on the Digimark mailing list, they have, certainly have already heard of the, uh, the Holy Grail project where the idea of uh, marking plastics uh, for recycling uh, so that we can turn waste into a, you know, a profit center. Uh, is uh, just incredible. So literally, you can you can mark in the mold a Digimark barcode. Uh, think of it like a like a fr like a frost. It looks like kind of like a frosted glass, you know. So instead of a bottle, and, and a lot of bottles already have this. They have kind of texture molded in. Well, why not make that texture be scannable? Um, so to me, uh, and that and there's a lot a lot of a lot of things out there, but. I'm just super excited about the technology and the growth potential to really get uh, Digimark everywhere. Um, and, and of course, I'm interested in the quality, measuring the quality of it. So um, I'm really you know, having a lot of fun doing that, too. Exciting. Really exciting stuff. Um, so again, that was Sprague Ackley. He's the principal R&D engineer at Digimark and is AIM North America's professional of the year for 2020. So to learn more about Digimark and the Digimark platform, as well as Holy Grail uh, 2.0, uh, please go to digimark.com or follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Thank you.